Emma Thompson. Hello. Well. <laughs> I, look, I just wanted you to know, um, without me having to tell you, wh how I write. Because that's how I write. <laughs> I've left my water over there. Um, your water over this there. is, I've got a purple yoga mat. Um, there are rarely chips. Um, but it's a good idea now I come to think of it. And I have a little table about that size, and that's sort of what it looks like. And, do you and that's what I do. And I you hoover, I, I find odd places to, to um, polish, <laughs> you know, places that I haven't seen in a long time, sometimes parts of my own body. That's a good and, idea. Um, and why not? Yeah. And why not? I think it's good to know what the process idea. is like. I think There's it's very a lot important. of weeping as well. A lot There's of a crying. There's a lot of crying. Um, I thought I might, might as well start at the beginning since we're talking about writing. Yeah. And um, I, I think that it's very interesting where writing comes from, where your relationship with words comes from. And I think mine comes, yes, from reading, of course, but from my father, who mm. wrote The Magic Roundabout um, and was a, an actor. Um, who was said that BBC gave him these little French films um, and said, would you write the scripts for them yeah. because we can't put them on in French. And my father, who hated the French um, <laughs> openly, uh, was very rude, in fact, to Serge Dono, who created those puppets. There, there was never much warmth between them. And no, uh, he would sit at this funny little um, machine which he would work with his foot, and it was uh, reel to reel, and he would sit writing these scripts. As a little girl, I watched, I stood at his feet watching him just sitting there with his headphones on with this old machine for hours and hours and hours on And is that end. how he scripted it? And just that like, was yeah. how he scripted okay. it. He just watched the pictures and made things up. <laughs> because there's which, as if you think about it, screenplay writing is the same thing, only the other yeah. way around. Um, but he also taught me something else about it, which I'm sure relates to things we're going to talk about later, which was that he was writing things for children, mm. ostensibly, these were... And he made no concession to that whatsoever. No. He said children are just people who simply haven't lived as long as we have. Mm. So there's no need or reason to talk down to them as though they are from another planet. No. So I, would, I grew up with that. Yeah. And like Alan Bennett, who grew up with a father who would chase a dog out of his butcher's shop with the words, get out of here, you filthy lamppost smelling mm. article. Mm. Um, <laughs> you understand where it all yeah. comes from, and yeah. it's interesting. Anyway, I thought no, I think that's a, I divert think you. No, I, like, I really like that, the derivation of it, and we will come back to that. Tell me, uh, you went to university, you started writing when? How old were you when you started writing? Um, I started writing... <sighs> I always wrote, I wrote stories at school, yeah. but I started writing sketches. I was doing sketches with footlights from yeah. when I was 18, 19. And one time, <laughs> the footlights, that is me and amongst others, Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie, were holed up by um, snow in the Birmingham Exhibition Centre. And uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> we had been performing at the Phillips Small Appliances campaign dinner. <laughs> and Lovely. I was Lovely. about to do a song in a huge tam o' shanter this size and a big black mac. And I was following a stripper who was doing the Phillips Lady Shave. <laughs> That's what I had to come on after, in a gigantic tam o' shanter, doing, I worked for 14 years at the castle of Glenmark. <laughs> I mean, I died the death, and we all did. And then we were snowed in and we were stuck there. So I sat and wrote a sketch about a woman being caught in a traffic jam just outside Cushalton. <laughs> yes, it wasn't very funny at the time, actually, but um, I tried. I did try. But that's when I started writing sketches, because I was very much influenced by Stephen and Hugh yeah. and all that lot, and Footlights, really. So yes. right when, when I started writing anything longer, it was a bit like acting, really. When I was asked to act, I thought, well, it's just like doing a sketch only for longer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and stand-up was a great training just in how not to die mm. when you're more frightened than you have ever been and will ever be, ever, ever, <laughs> ever. Yes. Um, we're going to do uh, a monologue from around that time. 
But yeah. just before we do, do you want to just just give a little bit of context? context. Do you want to? Well, I think write, writing that? always has roots, yeah. which is why nothing is wasted ever. You know, and you hear things on buses, or you hear. I heard this sketch, Lenny Bruce, on how to relax your coloured friends at parties. <laughs> It just keeps going on about watermelon. <laughs> but it was written in the 60s, you know, when racism and he was living right in the centre of it and in the yeah. jazz world, of course, you know. And then the, the sketch I mentioned by George Melly yeah. was about a Hampstead liberal hostess talking about how fantastic it was that she had a black man at her party. I know. We see, the thing is, we're, we've kind of got past that now. I mean, let's hope. But <laughs> it, it was the 19, early 1970s, and so this was very cutting-edge political yeah. writing. Um, we, because everything was political in those days. We wrote yeah. an awful lot of, mm. of, of political material, and all of the comedy I wrote really was was political and it was about everything that I cared about. Everything. I mean, I would lie under a desk like that weeping because trying to be funny is mm. awful i'll do this yeah bit do, of why don't you do why i'll do a bit of this for you yeah. um I, yeah. I i might not be able to remember i've it, got but, the um, script if you need you've it. got the script that's good yeah. i've got the yoga mat as well so if i go under i'll just do a standing dog and that'll be just as interesting um so you're in an art gallery say and um so that's the art gallery there that's the walls and you are the pictures and uh um anyway so <coughs> hello <laughs> this is nice, isn't it? It's warm for once. You don't often get balmy nights in England. <laughs> I like that one. I like that one. It's nice, isn't it? It's sort of blue. Is that a head, do you think? Or a melon? <laughs> it's awfully expensive. I don't think I'd want anything up on my wall that I didn't know whether it was a head or a melon. <laughs> What's your name? Ho Piet Min. Oh, it's Vietnamese. Oh, hello, I'm Marjorie. Suddenly uh, on Thames. Um, oh, uh, are you a boot person? <laughs> oh, God, I was feeling. Hello. How was the journey? <laughs> No, well, I can imagine. Oh, awful. I crewed once for my <laughs> husband, Gerald, on a thing in the river once. I was terribly seasick. I absolutely wanted to die. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> Belinda, Belinda! Come and meet the who? Sorry? Oh, sorry, Min. Min. Where does it go backwards? Oh, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> look, tiny. <laughs> You got a lovely smile. <laughs> yes, I'd love another, thank you. <laughs> oh, do you live in London? Mm, what do you eat? <laughs> oh, baked beans. Gosh, I haven't had a baked bean for years. <laughs> They're awfully good, though, aren't they? What's it like food wise where you are? Oh, yeah, so it's awful going hungry, isn't it? I remember from when I had glandular fever. Oh, oh I know, I know the feeling. Awful. <laughs> Do you have children? Eight. <laughs> Gosh, that's a handful. Are they all here? <gasps> oh, you didn't have to leave them behind. Oh, God, how awful. I remember when Gerald and I went to Florence, we had to leave ours with a tame aunt. And I just remember their little faces up at the window staring out at us. God, they thought we were never going to be able to go back. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> Who are yours with? Well, Government care can be very good. <laughs> say something in Vietnamese. <laughs> oh no, go on, say something. Oh, oh, it's lovely, it's just like Chinese. <laughs> no, I don't speak Chinese either, I'm afraid. No, no, no. No, just so level French, comment ça va, all that sort of thing. <laughs> what do you do? Painting. <laughs> Decorating. <laughs> Interiors. You know. What? These? <laughs> you painted these? Oh. Oh. Oh, I... I'm so sorry, I'm so... I didn't think of you as a... 
What's interesting to me about performing that now is at the time I was doing that out of a kind of self-hating middle class thing and now I'm terribly interested in Marjorie. And also there's that synthesis of comedy and politics that mm. you were talking about because it's mm. very clear in that when you hear it. 